This week on El Cara Ham Radio, we're going to remount these radios with a more elegant panel solution, and we're going to re-architect the included power panel on this Motorola cabinet to connect our IOTA power supply to the outside world and run the DC to the outside. This week on El Cara Ham Radio. <laughs> I'm KY4BDP Brian, and this week we're going to remount these UHF radios utilizing a custom panel for the this express purpose. Uh, as you saw in the previous video, we took the shelf that they were originally mounted on and we re-architected uh, it for the power coming in to the Motorola cabinet. Well, this week we uh, thought, well, let's go ahead and get these radios mounted the way we want them mounted, utilizing this custom panel. We did go out and buy these panels. AC4DM found these and said, why not go ahead and use these? This will make it look even cleaner and that's what we are doing here getting these radios mounted to the brackets which then allows them their front panel to be exposed on the front side of the cabinet. Uh, adjusting the depth was something that we had to consider here because if the little knobs stick out too far we can't actually uh, put the door back on the cabinet so uh, we made sure that we adjusted these so that those knobs aren't sticking out too far. In fact they, they're probably sticking out too far here and AC4DM went back and readjusted them a little bit deeper so that uh, they wouldn't interfere with the front panel. Doesn't that look great? We've also labeled the radios uh, for transmit and receive. That way we know which one is which, especially when we start uh, connecting everything, which will be in the next video. Um, we'll also be putting these uh, labels on the front side of this uh, panel so we can see them a little better. Now we're going to take a look at this uh, uh, included Motorola power distribution panel as well as connectivity for RF and whatnot. You can see there's a number of uh, spacers built into it that you can just knock out and use as you wish. Uh, there's a proprietary Motorola connector on the inside and we need to replace that with a more um, easily utilized three-prong plug and so we need to take the cabinet apart a little bit so that we can remove this side panel and then we also need to just go ahead and remove this power connect uh, sub panel from the side uh, uh, railing if you will or framework so that's next we're going to go ahead and remove the silver part of this off of the actual uh, side rails but as you can see there there's AC power for coming in there's also a ground lug there there's some knockouts as well for other items we're going to use the uh, the rectangular knockout there just to the top left uh, to bring the Anderson PowerPort DC uh, battery connection in but we need to rewire this AC plug we have the IOTA power supply inside the cabinet now and we need to bring AC power in from the outside so that the IOTA has uh, its mains power uh, so that not only can we charge the battery and desulfate it from time to time since it has a, a three or four phased uh, um, uh, charging option the IQ4 module but we also want to make sure that uh, we can utilize uh, the uh, iota for the mains power when uh, we have mains power not utilize the battery here we are clipping off that proprietary plug and we're going to take the three wires here your ground your neutral and your hot and we're going to connect that to a standard three prong plug uh, that you can get from anywhere and as you can see here ac4dm is stripping off the ends a little bit here so that we can begin the installation of the three prong plug now the version that he's going to be bringing into the frame here in just a minute is two halves there's the shell and then there's the actual prong uh, female prong end itself so you can see this shell piece right here and then we'll be connecting uh, the female three-prong piece uh, to the wires that we have here and we want to make sure that we get those wires in the right sequence and of course uh, AC4DM knows exactly what those colors mean uh, I know my green my white and my black these were a little bit different and he had to educate me you can see green to green here uh, just as the plug indicates uh, on the side so we're going ahead and uh, attaching the green wire and then we'll just replicate that on the rest. You can see this is going to the actual ground in this particular case, this green. 
and then we'll connect the other two wires, the blue-ish and the brown-ish. <laughs> In any event, uh, you can see this is going to give us the uh, the female end, and the IOTA power supply has the male AC connector that will plug into this. And that way our IOTA now is connected to this power panel piece, and then all we have to do is connect mains utilizing a, a pretty typical uh, three-prong plug cable uh, to go to whatever power supply we have uh, mains power in the abandoned repeater site shack. Just finishing up getting these wires connected and now connecting the other end of this plug to protect the connections we've just, uh, that AC4DM just tightened down. And now we have the proper AC connection that we need for the IOTA power supply. And this will actually hang on the inside and we just need to put this part of the uh, uh, AC um, power connector back together. And here we're taking a little shop air and we're blowing out the dust bunnies or if some of you are former Marine Corps uh, members, uh, you might uh, remember we used to call these ghost turds. But uh, in any event, uh, dust bunnies is probably a more <laughs> easily utilized term for that. And uh, so we got that. You can see the three prong is just dangling there ready for the IOTA to be reinstalled. In addition to that, uh, AC4DM was looking at this uh, panel that he'd used in a previous project. It actually had a, a larger gauge wire uh, coming from the positive going over to the, uh, the meter that we're using for voltage and uh, said, you know, we don't really need that big wire. So he went ahead and reduced the gauge here on the wiring to, to not only supply power to this, uh, this fuse box, but also to the meter on the far top hand side. So we're just finishing up that installation. We're also using one of those custom fuses with the holes in it. <laughs> you, know, you can't really buy those. You have to make the holes yourself. And we're just tightening those down. The way he's got this uh, set up, you'll notice the resistor in the bottom left there next to the, uh, to the uh, fuse. And if the fuse blows, that resistor then becomes the only pathway which will light up an LED. And that lets you know that your fuse is blown. So uh, uh, just interesting little tidbits here that uh, I'm learning all the time. And it's great that we can capture this type of uh, electric uh, um, engineering on camera. Plus, uh, we have the distribution panel there as well if we need additional uh, power. And we're looking at our Anderson power plug coming off of that. And then this will actually stick through the cabinet. We're going to make a hole in one of those uh, knockouts on the same Motorola cabinet power uh, panel piece and uh, those uh, will get some Anderson power plugs and then we'll actually route that uh, to uh, through the cabinet to the outside so we can connect it to a battery and that way the IOTA will not only provide main power when we have mains but it can also charge the battery if we were to lose power the battery will be perfectly ready to take over I can't even guess how many Anderson power poles AC4DM has probably put on in his lifetime so now you can kind of see how the radios are installed here uh, and uh, as well as the uh, microcomputer uh, concepts controller. It's labeled a cat, but it's actually an MCC. And then we'll install the power shelf just underneath that and then route everything. And there's our power shelf installed from the last video. And uh, we just need to route the, uh, the DC uh, out the knockout and we just need to connect the IOTA to the new AC female uh, head that we installed as well so here we're just doing a quick preview we got a little spacer in there for airflow there's our meter that we just uh, installed a new lower gauge wire or, or a smaller gauge wire and then there's our shelf install with the distribution plugs for the radios and plugs and and whatnot and the iota power supply almost done with the cabinet build here and we went ahead and connected you can see we've uh, routed the uh, the DC down to the battery just to double check that our meter was working all of our power was still working and in fact it was we're gonna reroute that cable through a knockout there on the side where the AC is coming in and we're getting about 13 and a half volts now you can see we've got the AC connected and uh, we uh, brought over uh, an extension cord and uh, the IOTA is plugged into the uh, plug there just below the shelf and you can see we're charging and we have nearly 15 volts. It's 14.7 or something like that and we are done with this part of the cabinet. And so for all intents and purposes, other than some of the termination up in the termination panel, we are done. And there's the Anderson power plug coming out the correct knockout.
In our next video, we're going to talk about programming the radios uh, just to make sure they're programmed the way they need to be for receive and transmit, and we'll need to adjust the termination panel as well. So stay tuned for part five in the GMRS Repeater Build.